Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so we are finishing up with the boys. We are now into the conclusion. And, and in the last video that we did, we kind of did like the aftermath, you know, the, the kind of big revelation that we got, right? The idea that there were essentially two, two Homelanders, right? You had Homelander as we knew him, which was the guy with the American looking suit and all that kind of stuff. Then there was Black Noir, who was a clone of Homelander, but more powerful, designed to keep Homelander in check or destroy him should he ever end up, you know, running awry or something like that. And all the terrible things that Homelander, quote unquote, had been doing was actually done by Black Noir, right? He had essentially gone gone insane, more or less. And so the result of this is that with the collapse of the superheroes, the death of Homeland, or the death of Black Noir, all these guys, that basically it's all kind of gone belly up. Everybody knows everything that's been going on with the superheroes, that the stories that were crafted in these comic books were not real, right? That the reality is that superheroes as they existed in the boys' universe were created by Vaught American and Compound V. And the whole idea behind it was to secure the role of superheroes in the defense contract, right? To get Vaught American all that, that defense contract money. And so what we end up doing Doing here is basically picking up with Voss. Now, Voss, if you guys recall him, he was part of the glorious five year plan, which is basically Russia's superhero team. The issue here is that Voss is literally being blown apart, like literally being blown apart. <laughs> there's some guy hanging here on a chain, and there's this kind of, of taunting going on. You should have stayed out of this man, like you shouldn't have been involved in this, any of that stuff. Only for us to find out that once he gets hit with a rocket and basically has a hole blown in his in his body, that it was essentially Billy Butcher who was taking him out, right? Billy Butcher was the one who killed Voss. From there, you pick up with Huey, and what you end up learning is there, there's this big uh, this big congressional inquiry that's going on into Vought American. And so that's why, like, when you have all this kind of going on, people are asking questions like, how far reaching does this go? You know, like, society has more or less lost trust in Vought American. But regardless of the situation, what you end up having is Huey basically heading back and meeting with the boys minus Billy Butcher, right? So meeting with Mother's Milk and the Frenchie and the female, and basically says, like, we're done now. The whole point of this was to bring down the superhero community, was to essentially bring an end to the actions of Vought American and to ensure that superheroes are more or less taken out. And funny enough, the rest of them agree. You got everything going on with Mother's Milk, his daughter and his ex-wife. You got everything going on with Frenchie and his family. You've got the female, her whole thing going on. Everybody's like, yeah, man, we're kind of done here. Like it's time to essentially move on, you know, and to, to more or less just be done with it. <laughs> and so at that point, Billy Butcher, of course, shows up and then tells Huey, like, like he, he's not really aware of the conversation going on with everybody wanting to leave. Instead, he kind of walks in. For him, it's kind of business as usual. And this is, hey, by the way, Huey, I'm going to make you second in command just like you asked. And initially, this seems kind of innocuous. Initially, he's just kind of like, okay, so like, whatever. Like, he was going to be second in command of a group that doesn't really have any actual hierarchy aside from Billy Butcher leading it. Whatever. But what this does is it actually starts to split the team. And there's a reason why Billy Butcher did this, right? But essentially, it creates a rift. Now, for the most part, when it came to Huey, he wasn't really the weakest member of the team. But it was one of these things where he, it was obvious he never really had the heart for it. He never really had the, the stomach for like killing people, torturing people, things like that. So he was never really officially part of the boys. You have Mother's Milk who's been there really since the beginning. The same thing with like the Frenchie and, and with the with the female, like they've been around much longer than, than Huey has. And so as a result of that, Huey being made second in command makes them kind of look at him funny. And if anything, it drives even more of a rift between the team where they all kind of split off and they all go do, you know, all end up going and, and, and doing their own thing, sort of leaving Billy Butcher to do whatever it is that he feels like doing. At the same time, you end up having Starlight who basically bails, right? She's like, with everything going on and the superheroes, the fact that everybody's hunting for us, I'm going to go lie low, right? Like I'm, I'm going to go lay low. I'm going to go do my thing. I'll see you when I see you. And the reality is that this was a long time coming. They'd been on the rocks for a really, really, really long time. And there really didn't seem to be any kind of reconciliation that could be made there, right? And so Huey ends up going to visit the legend and starts kind of asking questions, you know, like, hey man, I got this text from Voss. Like, do we know what's going on with Voss? And, and the reality is that nobody really knows, right? Voss has just kind of been an MIA for quite some time. Now we know it's because Voss is dead. And that's when the legend comes clean, that basically Voss has been killed by somebody. You know, they don't really know who it is, but he was essentially kind of blown to pieces. Not only that, with Huey looking at his text message, what it says is T34 at Lennon, basically. And this is kind of like, okay, so like with it being that way, he doesn't know how to make heads or tails of it. But one of the funny things is that you end up having uh, having Legend basically saying, look, if you want to get to the bottom of what's going on, you want to like really understand what's happening, then you need to start making some phone calls. And explicitly, you should talk to Monkey. Now, if you guys recall, Monkey was the guy who was second in command under the director of the CIA, right? He was basically her help, more or less. Uh, and then once the director had kind of moved on her, you know, from her position and was pursuing a Senate seat, 
that monkey kind of became the steward right he was he's like the youtube ceo he's the one that's running the company until like the advertisers show up he's kind of running the running the company or running the cia until like the people who actually make the decisions come along and then start start you know saying here's what we want to do here's here's what's going to happen right so he's essentially a steward and so as a result of that he still kind of has a lot of control in terms of the day-to-day -day operations and that's where huey really kind of begins to switch right because he calls this guy up and says hey look man here's what's going to happen like you're going to start giving me information and initially monkey's kind of a little big for his britches right he's kind of like hey man like you you don't have any authority here you don't have any control here the cia disavows you all that kind of stuff and that's when huey kind of shows this little glimpse of billy butcher right when he's like okay well either you can do what i want what i tell you to do or you know i can dump all this information out there for the world to know about what you're really like you know about how you're totally inept you know you're essentially incapable of doing this job effectively and you'd lose it before you ever really had it so play games you know play this game the way i want to play it or you're going to get the boot right so it's, it's it's pretty intense and it's very much what billy butcher would do and monkey kind of being you know really in a lot of ways the kind of coward that he is ultimately ends up curtailing like ends up ends up sort of turn coding there now another big thing that was going on here is you've got mother's milk finally catching up with his daughter initially he kind of starts to freak out but realizes that's not really what she needs like she just kind of needs to talk and so the two of them really just kind of start conversing and that's when we end up learning that not everything is what it seems where you look at the daughter of mother's milk and you see her as this girl who looks like she's like 18 19 20 years old the reality is she's 12 her body just aged exceedingly fast because of the compound v in her system that was passed on to her by her father and so the the truth is that she's still easily manipulated and that's exactly what her what her mother did right use this girl to get to mother's milk and so as a result of that initially the response of, of mother's milk is okay well then i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go to wherever it is your mom's at and i'm gonna take care of business out there only for it to be explained that it already happened after the team had more or less kind of gone its own separate ways that billy butcher had traveled all the way out there and billy butcher had essentially gone through he killed the ex-wife of mother's milk he killed pretty much everybody in the room ripping their heads off or smashing their head through a wall or something like that but for the daughter of mother's milk it was crushing because with billy butcher killing her mother he took his time right he literally grabbed her head and just started caving her head in in a really slow way to where she kind of felt every ounce of it but at the same time it instilled this insane amount of fear in mother's milk himself and that's where things had kind of popped off because the response was okay he starts realizing there's something else going on here with billy butcher outside of him just sort of fighting against these various superheroes from that point you jump into the legend and that's when you have billy butcher there and what you end up realizing is billy butcher's tying up loose ends billy butcher's going from one place to the next and taking people out now we don't know why he took out Voss, and we don't really know why he's taking out the legend but it seems like they're essentially loose end characters they have a lot of information information that could be detrimental to whatever the plan is that billy butcher has going on and so what he does is literally the legend kind of goes fleeing for his life only to essentially fall out and then basically look you know appear like he has a heart attack and then die on the spot and that's basically it from there huey ends up firing off an email realizing that the text message he got from Voss is t34 at lenin dot are you right so fires off an email says hey man like let me know what's going on like like talk to me you know about about this and it essentially seems to get like this a crazy amount of information and it's, and it's funny because this was an automated response that he gets right with Voss basically being dead Voss had his suspicions about Billy Butcher and so he set up an automated system that should Huey send this email to an email address that was sent to Huey in a text message following the death of Voss he would get an automated response that would reveal everything that Voss knew right all the suspicions the whole nine yards and that's when things start popping off because what Huey does is start going back and looking at everything that took place. He ends up calling Monkey, talking to him. He ends up recalling his conversations with Mallory. He ends up looking at all the events that have essentially unfolded up to this point. And one of the big concerns that Mallory had was with Billy Butcher going forward and, and doing his whole thing, the worry was that Billy Butcher was a guy who would always need a war. He would always need a conflict. He would fight this war forever if he could get away with it because of the vendetta and the hatred he has against superheroes. And that was one, that was what Mallory realized and then tried to cut Billy Butcher off. Off. And so what you end up having is essentially this scenario playing out like this, that basically Billy Butcher, when he came on board, when he was brought on board by Mallory, really seemed to love what it was that he was doing. At the same time, it was, I want to be able to take off the, take out these superheroes, the vendetta that I have against them, the death of, death of my wife, you know, how screwed up they are in society, the whole nine yards. I'm going to fight them forever as long as I possibly can. And so in order to achieve this goal, that what he had done is the previous notion was that a guy named Vogelbaum who developed Compound V was taken out, that Billy Butcher didn't kill him. That was one of his first assignments was to kill Vogelbaum. He didn't do that. Instead, he kept Vogelbaum on the back burner. And Vogelbaum was the guy who had developed the compound V that was used by the boys in order to give them their, their enhanced abilities. When you had the whole situation unfolding where all these superheroes were taken out by missiles developed by the military that were designed to essentially target them in a specific way that could destroy them, the question was, how did the government know about this, right? How did the government know this inherent weakness inside these superheroes? And the reason why is because Billy Butcher having accessed the compound V 
of Nina. If you guys remember her, the one who was building that superhero army, accessing that version of Compound V that could basically be used in a way to where if it was triggered correctly using a correct radio wave, it would blow up the, the various people's heads. Billy Butcher had essentially grabbed that and then grabbed the particular neutron in the brain and then sent it to the military and said, if you develop bombs that can access this, that can track this particular target, then you'll take them out, right? Basically activate that, that particular substance and it'll blow their heads apart, right? You guys can use these, these missiles, destroy them all effectively, you know, so on and so forth. Billy Butcher was the one who orchestrated all of that. At the same time, Billy Butcher had basically kept Vogelbaum on the back burner so Vogelbaum would continue developing this Compound V even after Billy Butcher had taken all that tainted Compound V from Nina and then intended to basically disperse it around the world and give it to all these various heroes or, or at the very least to use it as a means to destroy the various members of the superhero community who are out there. Billy Butcher intends on fighting this war forever if he possibly can. The Billy Butcher has kind of had this under this, this sort of ongoing campaign that's been taking place this entire time and has been trying to essentially remove anybody who knows about it, right? Voss had figured out what was going on. Voss had went to go track a guy who was essentially just using all these trucks and so on and so forth and moving this compound V around. Voss had tracked this guy down. Ultimately, Billy Butcher realized what Voss was up to and took out both of them. The legend was taken out because legend was the one who was going to give information to Huey that would have led him to this path anyway. Essentially, it was him, you know, nipping in the bud anybody that could get in the way of his plan. It's actually pretty ingenious if you think about it because what it does is it leads to Mother's Milk essentially confronting Billy Butcher. Now, it's not as though he's confronting Billy Butcher based on this information, but he confronts Billy Butcher because of the fact that everything his daughter had told him, that Billy was there, Billy killed his ex-wife, so on and so forth. And with this revelation that Billy intends to fight this fight forever, Mother's Milk's like, do you really plan on doing this? The response of Billy is yes. And that's where, where you kind of run into the moral quagmire of the boys. That when you look at the entire superhero community, yes, there are really screwed up superheroes out there who engage in some pretty heinous activities. But for the most part, most superheroes out there just want to live their lives, right? They weren't really aware of what Bot American was doing. All they knew was that they were individuals who had superpowers and Bot American was working with them and they would give them stories and they would say, go here and take up residence in this place. A lot of the superheroes were just good people doing what they thought were good things. And because of that, Billy Butcher doesn't really see a differentiation. If you're a hero, you're a bad guy. If you have powers, you're a bad guy. If you don't have powers, you're probably a good guy. Whatever, who cares what you're doing? With the other people here, it's kind of like, but it's not that black and white. It's nuanced, right? You can't just kill everybody with superpowers because of some vendetta that you have. This ultimately leads to a fight between Mother's Milk and Billy Butcher, and it's it's, it's not super lengthy. Mother's Milk gets the upper uh, gets the upper hand initially, but Billy Butcher is able to outmaneuver him. And Billy Butcher, realizing what it is that Mother's Milk planned on doing, ends up taking a grenade, putting it in his face, and then blowing it up, right? And so it basically blows his face apart, you know, because of the fact he's still alive, you know, with Compound V and everything. After that, suffocates him, and that's the end of Mother's Milk, right? He ends up being killed by Billy Butcher. And it's kind of nuts here, right? Because Billy Butcher's killing his own guys. Huey ends up talking with the Frenchman. The Frenchman basically reveals, hey man, Mother's Milk's been killed by Billy Butcher. It's another one down. And it's kind of like, okay, so we got to keep going after these guys, right? We got to keep taking these, these individual guys out. From there, Huey following these various leads that he had picked up, the trucks that were being used to transport the compound V that was moved by Billy Butcher in order to disperse it across the country by basically granting people powers and then going after them for having powers, kind of creating his own war. You know, Huey ends up managing to track down Vogelbaum only to find out that he's actually dead now. Vogelbaum served his purpose. At that point, he gets a call from Billy Butcher. And Billy Butcher is just kind of like, hey man, like you're kind of fading in and out. Are you down in the lab? You know, all this kind of stuff, but knows exactly where Huey is. And this is probably one of the most important parts because when the two of them are talking and the two of them are kind of going back and forth, that you would eventually have this instance whereby Billy Butcher asks Huey, he says, hey man, like, how do I know where you are? And Huey's like, well, because you're talking to me over the phone. And he says, no, 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 How do I know that you're at that house? How do I know that you're at the place where Compound V was previously stored before I had it moved? Where I had Vogelbaum creating Compound V for me, how do I know that you're there? And that's where Huey begins to kind of get scared and sort of panic. And the reason why that's important is because for the character of Huey, he's always kind of been fearful of Billy Butcher, right? Billy Butcher represents a kind of chaos that Huey's not used to. No one knows what Billy Butcher's going to do. And this plays out insofar as the Frenchie and the female, in the sense that, that you basically have Huey, you know, and, and the Frenchie talking back and forth. And it's like, okay, you know, that conversation ends pretty quickly. And then you have Huey basically talking, you know, talking with the female and the two of them kind of going over their, their whole thing and, and him really musing over whether or not he actually made the life of the female better. The issue is that in the middle of all this, they hear a kind of sound going off, a kind of activation. And as they start sorting through the apartment, they end up realizing there's a, a whole huge case of C4 with a timer at two seconds. And that's the end of the Frenchie and the female. The whole place is blown up. It's the end of them. Billy Butcher is systematically going through and killing off each and every member of his team. He's taken out Mother's Milk. He's taken out the Frenchie and the female. And the next person is to go after Huey. Because what this does is it leads to a conflict between Billy Butcher and Huey. And the reason why is 
because Huey was notified by Monkey that essentially Billy Butcher had walked into the Empire State Building and had basically said there's going to be a terrorist attack here. Everybody has to leave, right? So we have essentially evacuated the building. Now he kind of has the authority to do that because he's still somebody with some authority in the CIA, albeit not really on a, on a level that anybody of any significance cares about. But if you're a couple of cops, you know, you're some security guards, you're some, you know, rent a cops or whatever. And like some guy comes walking in, you know, and says, hey, like NYPD, here's the CIA badge. There's going to be a terrorist attack. Everybody's got to evacuate. Of course, they're going to do what you tell them to. That's what they're supposed to do. They follow orders. They don't really ask questions or anything. And so because of that, Huey essentially kind of comes to this realization that it's going to end up being a kind of one-on-one -on -one fight between himself and Billy Butcher. And it's a cool moment because Huey gets there and immediately starts crapping his pants, right? Because Billy Butcher is, is kind of imposing, right? It's one of these things where when he speaks, people listen, right? He just kind of has that commanding voice that radiates authority, you know? And so because of that, you know, Huey kind of looks at that and is just sort of terrified by this prospect, right? Because here's this guy that could just overwhelm him with extreme force. But at the end of the day, Huey ends up nutting up and gets into an initial fight with Billy. And then in turn, you know, ends up flying through one of the window shards and the two of them go crashing down below. Huey lands on one of the spikes, which how he landed in that way is kind of strange. And Billy Butcher's paralyzed from the neck down after, you know, after landing the way that he did. And so as a response to that, there, there really isn't a great big, huge skirmish here. There isn't really a great big, huge conflict. The fight is, is two or three pages long and it's not even really a fist fight. And that's what's kind of crazy about it is you would expect this to sort of coalesce with a great big, huge conflict between Billy Butcher and, and Huey, right? This great big, huge battle all over the building and like throwing each other into, into pillars and all that kind of stuff, you know, and maybe even like thrown out of the building and falling like 200 feet or something along those lines. Whatever the case is, like you would expect it to be this great big, huge, grandiose thing, but it's not. Instead, Huey had basically found a way to kind of to kind of spill the beans to ensure that the authorities would arrive here within a certain amount of time. The other part of this was the question about Vaught American, right? What kind of response would Vaught American end up dealing with here? And that's when you basically end up learning that when it came to Jasper Stillwell, I think is what, uh, is, is what this guy's name was, uh, when it came to, to, you know, Mr. Stillwell, more or less, that when he was meeting with this, this younger woman, right? When he was meeting with this woman and he was having conversations with her and the two of them were really getting to know each other, that what this was designed to do was essentially create a fall guy. That when he was grooming this woman and basically saying like, you know, you're an intricate member of Von American now, you're going to be overtaking my operations, the things that I was doing. I'm moving higher up in the company. It was designed to create a fall guy, presenting her with information, her the one that, that kind of carried out a lot of the campaigns because essentially everything that had gone on really in the last three or four videos that we've done was really kind of orchestrated by her in terms of the actions of Von American. This guy had basically kind of removed himself from the equation and then turned around and turned state's witness. You know, with regards to the congressional inquiry, said, oh my God, guys, here's all this information on what Vought American has been doing. How crazy is it? It was all done by her, you know? And so because of that, she's the only one left hanging, right? She's she's the one there that's facing the firing squad. And as much as it sucks, it's the smartest move this guy possibly could have made to get himself out. And that's what's, what's so significant about this is this guy was so removed from everybody, right? He didn't care about anybody or anything, just constantly saving his own backside. And so as a result, this woman kind of had to know, but at the same time, she was sort of caught up with the idea of moving upwards in the company that she couldn't see the forest for the trees. And the result was that she ended up getting caught up. It kind of sucks. You know, from her perspective, it was, okay, we can both make it out of this with our hands clean. You know, she was literally fighting on his behalf and her behalf only for her to be sold out, you know, hung out to dry, you know, and so it's rough. Right? It's, it kind of blows, you know, but I guess I, I don't work in the corporate scene. Maybe that's what it's like out there. I have no clue. <laughs> if it is, I don't want to be a part of that scene. Uh, that, that, that's a little more than I can handle, right? Like I'm not in the business of leaving folks out to dry, but nonetheless, you know, with Billy Butcher, basically, you know, being stuck back here on Empire State Building, completely paralyzed from the neck down, you know, he's going to be caught by the cops. He's going to be thrown in prison and that's going to be the end of him. And so in order to kind of goad Huey, the thing that he's realized that Huey would always sort of engage in a violent action if he's pushed in the right direction. And if he's led to believe that there's a justification for it, Billy Butcher comes out and says, I murdered your foster family. Like I killed everybody back home. And Huey just immediately flies into a rage. And the reason why is because that's just kind of what he wanted, right? Like Huey wanted to kill Billy Butcher anyway, and Billy Butcher knew it, but Huey just couldn't really bring himself to do it because he's never been able to, right? He's never been the guy who could just look at someone and say, you're an asshole. Time to die, and that's it, right? I mean, he's never really been able to do that, right? And so because of that, Billy Butcher kind of pushed him in that direction because the alternative for Billy is to spend his life in prison, paralyzed from the neck down, a shadow of his former self, you know? And so with Huey killing Billy Butcher, he in turn calls up his family only to realize they're alive and well, that everything's fine, that the last laugh of Billy Butcher was to manipulate Huey into sparing Billy the worst fate, right? With him kind of going to prison, which is what Huey planned on, that he didn't want to be controlled by Billy Butcher anymore, he didn't want to be manipulated by him anymore. At the end of the day, the final joke is, 
but like you still were. And you did that in order to kill me because I got you to do it, right? So again, that's where the story ends. It's kind of it's kind of nuts. There is an epilogue, and we can probably co we can cover the epilogue at a future date. Uh, but there is an epilogue to it, which is kind of cool. But yeah, like it's interesting, right? Like it's it's kind of cool, right? Like it's, it's a it's a it's a pretty cool story. The boys is 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 certainly interesting insofar as taking traditional superhero themes and twisting them on their head. But again, that kind of goes into the fact that Garth Ennis is like super like super cynical more or less. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end for the future uncensored videos. I don't think I'm going to put any of those on YouTube. I mean, we did the boys. I think the other ones we're going to leave off YouTube uh, public and instead we're going to leave them on Patreon uh, strictly for the Patreon uncensored uh, patrons. They can kind of see all that stuff. They can see all the uncensored videos, which is basically everybody. It's like a buck a month, right? You see like all the uncensored videos. The next one that we're going to do, well, I guess I'll announce that one on Patreon. So if you guys want to see it, go head over to, to patreon.com slash comics explain, but I'll announce it over there. The next one that we're going to do, and hopefully you guys will dig it, right? I might let you guys vote on it to be honest like i might let you guys vote on the uncensored comics which ones we do make the poll available for like two or three days so you can do your research see which one you like the most but uh yeah guys we're gonna bring this video to an end uh if you guys are new here to comics explain make sure you hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and i will catch you all later peace I want to say thank you to all of the new patrons who have joined patreon.com slash comics explained. I want to give a shout out to Henry, Young Typhon, Elias G, David J S, Jacob H, Ben, John H, Jason C, Austin S, Austin H, <laughs> James O, Chris T, Matt N, Jeff R, Joey M, Stephen Z, Sloth Like Lou, David C, John H, Lean and Mean. That guy asks questions all the time. Adam K, Genosis916. I want to say thank you to all of you all. This list is growing all the time. Thank you for joining the Patreon. <laughs>